One of the biggest questions I'm asked often is about defending or retaining existing business. Um, in many sectors, you have a situation where um, clients are with you and they're constantly being pitched by your competitors. Sometimes they're being pitched with a cheaper service and in difficult times, uh, clients can feel the appeal of cheaper and lower cost services. So how do you defend an account? Uh, how do you defend a client uh, uh, and protect a client and retain a client in a more competitive environment or when price pressure starts to rear its head? Number one, um, you should have an account plan. You should have a, a plan within the management of your account to defend that account from the day you win it. So first things first, one of the things that I say to the team is look at uh, what could go wrong. F number one, where could the weak points be in this process that we're going to deliver for this client? Where can it go wrong and manage where it could go wrong? So identify all the vulnerabilities that could undermine your credibility or your service or could cause niggles, frustrations and annoyances. Yes, in any client relationship, it doesn't always work as planned. But where's where's the bit that keeps the relationship and makes the relationship strong to deal with those? Now, if you're dealing with a transactional client or you're dealing with a client where it feels a bit uh, less like a relationship and more like... Um, master and servant, I would uh, challenge you to question that relationship. The reason being is if you've got a master and servant relationship in your business, there's probably a lack of respect. There's probably a more transactional thought process. And if that's how it is, you'll probably you need to reestablish the way your sale client relationship works. You can't build a business of whatever scale on a master-slave relationship. And I know many businesses, big and small, that have allowed this relationship to develop. We are partners, you are partners. We have to work together to make a success. Often what happens, and I see this in the marketing and advertising world a lot, is you have this master-slave relationship in client and, and, and supplier. And effectively, the client tells you exactly what to do. Now, we will, we will try and walk from those relationships as a business because, one, it doesn't bring out the best in us, it doesn't achieve the best result for the client, and it's not a great environment to work in where you, you, you literally have zero relationship. But if you're trying to defend any relationship, you need to look for where the weak spots are and where it can go wrong. And one of them will be the level of relationship where you can have open, honest dialogue, where it's not blame game and people within the client organization trying to cover their arse by throwing a lot of stuff onto you. That's about boundaries. That's about creating those boundaries before you sell into the account. Before you sell into the account. Um, so number one, know the weak spots. Number two, create the boundaries. Number three, um, and this was said to me about 20 years ago, and it said this, Every client you have will ultimately use someone else, not need you anymore, or go out of business. Every client you have will end up in one of those three things. They'll not need use somebody else, not need you, uh, or go out of business, or you know, not uh, close down, whatever. Now that sounds like a quite cynical way of thinking about it, but when you understand that that's likely to happen. You should be constantly evaluating each client that you have and looking and going, okay, where's the weak spot here? So from the finance point of view, if they go out of business, that can hurt. So if you're dependent on one client, dangerous. Um, if they don't need you anymore, so do they start doing something themselves? Do they bring something in-house? Do they... Um, do they, uh, do they no longer do what need what you offer? Uh, these are realities that maybe you can't control. But then the final one of, do they use somebody else? You can control. And you should be looking at all the points of, this is what we do. And let's be honest with us, there's, there's, there's holes in every service, 
yeah? This isn't a popular thing to say, but it's true. Your service, my service, everybody's service, there's holes in it. There's places where it can not work as expected. There's places where if a client wants a particular thing, it won't work uh, the way they want. There's always, every business has these little niggles. So you should be examining your little niggles and looking at where does the competition solve those niggles? Because that's the spots. If a client's happy and satisfied and at getting value from what you're doing on an ongoing basis, they will be very, very reluctant to change. But if some of your niggles in your service, and don't tell me you haven't got any, because everybody has them. Uh, we're just being honest, right? Everybody has them. Little, little uh, points of frustration, little annoyances. Um, if you, if your competitors realise your niggles and discover your niggles, they will adapt their service. They'll probably create new niggles, different niggles, but they'll actually adapt their service and their value offering to close your niggles, to close your little vulnerabilities of where you can cause frustration or annoyance. That's what they'll do. They'll create a service that fits and solves the issues that you create with your product or service. I know we don't like to talk about things like this and it's a bit uncomfortable, but you create problems with your own service. We all do it. We all do it. Every service does. It creates a new problem. And so what happens is your competitors look for the new problem and go, we can do what they're doing and fix this. So I'd encourage you to look at what are the new problems you're creating for your customers? And do you have a plan to fix them? because they're the weak spots of where they could go elsewhere. That's the reasoning why they would go elsewhere. So you have to go, well, hang on a minute. If our price, we're sensitive on price, what's the overwhelming add-on we can do to really diminish the power of that problem? What's the overwhelming thing we can do on the timescales? on the comms, on the customer service, what's the overwhelming thing we can do to defend ourselves as those weak spots? Because that's the innovation that will, uh, if that's the innovation that if you don't do it, your competitors will and you will lose that account.